Can we start with the first? This is not new sound, okay? When I'm telling you an answer, you can't ask me another question <laughs> You're making a cardinal mistake, Sadhguru <laughs> You have a different package here <laughs> So it's okay to have fear, it's okay to be insecure. These are the four things, Sadhguru, that we are told to get rid of. Who is your guru? Who's? <laughs> Why should I reveal? If I give you tools for transformation, the only thing is to learn to use the tools, that's all. You know, when… when my daughter was just three and a half months old, she was traveling with me. One hand on her and my right leg is always full down and I drove across the country and she grew up like this with me till she's five, till she went to school. Every day we are in a different home, staying with all kinds of people, everybody wants to teach her something. I said, one rule is nobody will teach her anything. No ABC, no one, two, three, no Mary had a little lamb, because I don't care whether Mary had a lamb or not <laughs> So you won't believe nobody taught her anything. By the time she's eighteen months, she fluently speaks three languages because she's all ears, because nobody talks to her <laughs> She just grasps everything around her because nobody is teaching her anything. And she grew up like this and when she was twelve, thirteen years of age, one day she came up to me. She just come ba came back from school disturbed about something there and uh, she said, you're teaching everybody so many things, you're not telling me anything. I said, well, I don't do anything unsolicited. Here you come now, let's see. So this is all you need to know. So what I want to know is how human you are. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is how you human I am. I have finished my question. <laughs> uh, no. I, I want to know, I want to know how human you are, Sadhguru. Because… and the reason I'm asking you this is because <laughs> very often we want to be guided by people who we feel have transcended the insecurities of humanity. So I want to know whether you're scared of something. <laughs> I There's want to know whether you experience fear, and I would also like to know whether you have attachments. Can we start with the first? Let me finish this <laughs> This is not news hour, okay? When I'm… when I'm telling you an answer, you can't ask me another question <laughs> I'll get back. <laughs> I'll get back. And not… we're not yet in Republic either <laughs> You're making a cardinal mistake, Sadhguru. In 2014, I met a young man called Rahul Gandhi. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why anyone's laughing again. <laughs> he too interrupted me like you did. I got back later. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> but you'll have to answer my question later. Please go ahead. Uh, you, ha you have a different package here <laughs> So, I, I will come to that, I'm very much going towards that. So the girl comes to me and says this, then I say, see, this is all you have to know. Never look up to anybody. She looks at me, what about you kind of thing. I said, not even me, never look up to anybody, never look down on anybody, this is all the teaching. If you don't look up to anything, if you don't look down on anything, you will see everything just the way it is. If you see everything just the way it is, you will navigate your life effortlessly. That's all it takes. Now, how human am I? You just now use the word human and almost everybody, everywhere I go, they w use the word human, always referring to the limitations of being human never talking about the immensity of being human. Oh, I'm only human, but why are you not saying I'm human? You're on top, you're the top species on the planet. <laughs> you're supposed to be in the top of the pile of all the species. Why people are saying I'm only human is because they're suffering themselves like no other creature. Not an ant or an elephant suffers themselves as human beings do. The stomach is full, they are fine. For human beings, stomach empty, only one problem, stomach full, one hundred problems. 
The reason is this is an evolutionary thing <laughs> It's an evolutionary thing that what you call as your cerebral flower, this brain, is new to you, you know, in the evolutionary scale of things, it is a new happening, this intellect. And most people have not figured how to handle it. They're not suffering the world, they're suffering their own thought and emotion most of the time. Why is it your education systems did not even teach you how to handle your thought, how to handle your emotion? Now the moment you say you're human or not, first thing, the next question somebody will ask is, can I pull a gold chain from thin air, can I do something else or can I pull out a rabbit from the vessel or can I pull a pigeon out of my pocket? If I pull a pigeon out of pocket, my pocket, what will you have? You will have a bird, I'll have a shitty pocket <laughs> This is not going to change anybody's lives. I will show you a miracle. I will show you people who have… who are full-on activity, not people who are sitting in some cave, full-on activity, all right? Twenty hours a day, seven days of the week, we are all on. I'll show you people for five, ten, fifteen years, they've not had a moment of anger, agitation, irritation, nothing. They live joyfully, blissfully. This is the miracle the world wants. This is the miracle the humanity needs. If this happens to you, you will not refer to human as a limitation, you will talk about human as a huge possibility. My question… my question was about you, whether you need to transcend a few things. I… I personally think it's all right. It's… Go it's good to feel fear, it's good to have insecurities, it's good to be attached. But what we are constantly told is to be guilty about fear, to be worried about expressing or being open that's about… A, that's multiplying the problem. Now you have fear, now you have See, guilt. Sadhguru, I… <laughs> Listen to okay. you. <laughs> I still watch news hour, so what can I do? <laughs> this doesn't usually happen. <laughs> but Rotary Club, well, okay, so you f made me forget my question. My, my, my point was that we are constantly told to be to be embarrassed about our insecurities, right? We are told not to have attachments. We are constantly told that in our lives and in our own Hindu philosophies and other philosophies to lose attachments. I want to know why this is necessary, which is why I asked you, because you were described as an enlightened soul, which I know you are. I asked you whether an no, enlightened, you, you enlightened, enli enlightened soul like you <laughs> feels insecure experiences attachment. See, why this has come up is because people have a selective sense of involvement. This is what I said when I said, do not look up to anything, look… do not look down on anything. This is because if you look up to any something, you will exaggerate. If you look down on something, you will exaggerate the negative. The moment you look up to something, you will get attached to it. The moment you look down on something, you will get dejected by it in some way, disgust will come. So these… these emotions of fear, insecurity, attachment, detachment, everything is a consequence. Shall we handle the source or shall we handle the consequence? People are always busy handling the consequence. They're telling you, trim your fear, can you fear trim it? No way is it going to work. Now you're flipping on the other side and saying, we need not be uh, ashamed of it, let's have it. Is it a pleasant experience, I'm asking? Is fear, insecurity, guilt, whatever, is it a pleasant experience? If it's a pleasant experience, keep it, it's up to you. If it's an unpleasant experience, is it a choice? I'm asking you just this much. In the world around us, what happens? It's a different issue. N world will never happen hundred percent the way you want it. Even if you're just two people in the family, still it doesn't happen hundred percent the way you want it. If it's fifty-one percent your way, you are the boss, okay <laughs> More than that won't happen. But what happens within you must happen your way, isn't it? If what happens within you happened your way, would you keep this blissful or would you keep this fearful or miserable or whatever? You wouldn't do that to yourself, isn't it? 
at least for yourself, you want the highest level of pleasantness. Though what you want for your neighbor may be debatable, but what you want for yourself is very clear, isn't it? So it's okay to have fear, it's okay to be insecure? No, I didn't say it's, that. It's okay to be attached? And, and, I'm and, asking and, and, you, and if you about, had a choice… And what about… what about ego, Sadhguru? Fear, insecurity, attachment and ego, these are the four things, Sadhguru, that we are told to get rid of. Over a period of time, we are told that as you grow older and you learn more in life, you must learn to give Who away all four. Who is your guru? Four. Pardon me? Who is your guru? Who's? <laughs> why should… why should I reveal? No, but this is a fact, this is what we are told. Let is me. it… is it necessarily the truth? Let's go one at a time, the ego. Everybody is talking about this. Right now, in a, any human being for that matter, if they do something wonderful, they'll say, I did it. If they do something nasty, it was my ego. So, Mr. Ego is a fall guy. Whenever you turn nasty, he's always there. But when you do good things, it's of course you, isn't it? I'm saying, let's become straight with life that sometimes you're wonderful, sometimes you're nasty, sometimes you're joyful, sometimes you're miserable, this is your reality right now. You don't need a fall guy. This much sincerity we must bring into our lives, that what happens from within me is me and nobody else but me. If you come to this much, now if you see you're fearful or you're miserable or you're frustrated or you're depressed, if you see it's all because of me, would you not want to change it? Would you not want to change it? One hundred percent. Now, I want to change it, how? Now you are asking for tools. That is why I am here just giving you tools for transformation. Because tools are important in human life. As human beings, we are dominating the planet only because of our ability to use tools. Otherwise, probably a colony of ants or a pa pack of dogs could dominate human species. But we can use tools. The power of tools is such. Right now, if I ask you to unscrew a little screw in this furniture, you may lose all your nails, it'll not come out. You may lose some of your teeth, it'll not come out. If I give you a little screwdriver, it'll come out. So similarly, to handle the inner dimensions, there are tools. These tools, this is the USP of this country, which is all messed up right now, that people have not presented it properly. If I give you tools for transformation, the only thing is to learn to use the tools, that's all. You don't have to believe any philosophy, you don't have to adhere to any ideology, you don't have to look heavenward because you don't know in which direction it is. People are looking up. After all, you're sitting on a round planet and the damn thing is spinning all the time. If you look up, you're obvious, inevitably looking up in the wrong direction.